Uh, my name is Wee Meng. I'm from the uh, IBM team here in Singapore. I'm an integration technical specialist uh, from the technical technology sales uh, business unit. Um, so today's session, uh, we're going to I'm going to share with you more about uh, our offering, IBM API management solution called API Connect. And when we talk, I mean, I'll talk about more uh, than just REST. You know, if all the while you've been doing API, uh, you would be very familiar with REST and SOAP. Uh, but in our um, offering now, in the latest version, uh, what we have is that you can even uh, integrate with GraphQL, where GraphQL offers you another way of doing integration uh, to do data exchange, right? So uh, let me set the scene. Okay, so I, I'm going to run through a couple of slides first to talk about the product offering, uh, where I'll uh, list out some of the uh, high-level overview of uh, what the product can do, how it does certain things. Then I'll go into a hands-on uh, demonstration. Okay, so uh, uh, this whole session, actually, probably three-quarter of the whole session is going to be about um, hands-on, where I'll show you how to do um, uh, uh, integrating or bringing in uh, REST APIs, SOAP APIs, and of course, uh, the GraphQL uh, as well as part into how the our API Connect offering solution can uh, integrate with uh, these three different integration patterns uh, for data exchange. So let me quickly start off by um, sharing with you the our API Connect uh, components. So if, if you look at it uh, over here, um, the typical uh, API management solutions would have a developer portal. Uh, an API manager, um, a, 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 probably a, a toolkit as well for developers to do their APIs. Um, that's the analytics part, and of course, analytics part, and of course, uh, it integrates with the gateway at runtime. So at runtime, uh, your HTTP client will be uh, connecting to the gateway to do policy validations, uh, and security checks, and then after that, it goes to the backend to consume the data and then push it out back to the HTTP client. But in the meantime, when the gateway does this um, validation and such, it actually pushes the analytics into the analytics component. And the, you will get to see the uh, in, as a, via a dashboard in the API manager, uh, what are the um, uh, usage of the APIs, maybe certain latencies as well. But at pre-run time, if you look at it, when the developer uses the toolkit to develop the API artifacts, uh, he can do testing. He can ensure that uh, the policies is uh, have the necessary security definitions in place, which later I'll, I'll demonstrate as well uh, in the in the hands-on. And once it's, it's okay already, he will publish the artifacts into the API manager to do um, governance and of course lifecycle, right? So uh, you don't take API every single one and publish it out to the gateway or the portal. It typically, what you do is you will uh, we call it productize. So you group your APIs into certain products. Uh, for your different uh, consumptions with providing different SLAs, right? You, know, you, you do rate limiting on the APIs, you do rate limitings at the product level so that the uh, backend is not impacted. Uh, you, and you set certain uh, uh, SLAs for your consuming applications to go and subscribe to. So once that is set up nicely in the API manager, you of course publish it to the gateway for uh, the runtime governance. Similarly, you also have the policies pushed to the developer portal where the real portal will allow your application developers from your different uh, external entities or internal developers to come in to view those published APIs, to um, subscribe to those uh, products that they want to use for the applications, uh, to download the uh, open API specs for looking at the documentation as well, or wisdom, so it be if it's a uh, soap based, right? So uh, this is roughly the high level overview of how our API Connect uh, components work with one another across here. Within the API um, um, cloud, we call API cloud in the whole API Connect uh, offering, uh, we can actually break it down into different um, sub-levels if you look at it. So we will we, define what we call an organization. The organization uh, allows you to uh, bring in your API developers into the uh, organization, and then they can start uh, uploading or testing their API artifacts in the different spaces that we, we can allocate. So your different development teams have their own spaces to go and uh, view the um, uh, artifacts that they are used to test, uh, so they, they won't actually cross into other uh, development teams. So once those um, artifacts are tested nicely, it gets uh, 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 pushed within the catalog to your gateway or to your uh, developer portal. 
And of course, within the API cloud, you can have multiple uh, organizations as well. You know? So each of these, you can actually have its own segregation to prevent uh, uh, different teams from doing across uh, uh, the different uh, development work that they're doing on. Okay. Uh, just give me a second. I just make sure uh, I can see some of you around. Okay. You can hear me well, right? All right. Okay. So let me continue. So, okay. That, that's probably the high level overview of uh, API Connect. Uh, if you need more details of uh, API Connect, uh, you can reach out uh, to IBM. Uh, and we can, of course, come to your organization and uh, do a more deep dive into the product offerings and the licensing, for example, as well. So over here now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a demonstration on these three different use cases. You can see over here, I'm going to share how we can uh, uh, bring in a REST API uh, definition, secure it with uh, client ID, and then subsequently, we can do an OAuth as well to, to secure the uh, API definition. Then similarly, I'll also show you uh, how we can take a simple uh, SOAP whistle uh, definition and expose it straight away in the uh, API Connect management solution uh, in, in a very fast manner. And of course, lastly, uh, I will show you how we can actually uh, expose and secure a GraphQL endpoint. So the difference, if you look at it between GraphQL and REST endpoints, is that a lot of times when you do REST APIs, um, you tend to uh, could be overfill or underfill because you, you have no control on the data that you want to bring in. You and you do multiple times, right? You have to call multiple API calls to get in your uh, backend data. In, in GraphQL, uh, it's actually a single endpoint. Later, you will see it. Basically, with a single endpoint, you can actually define what are the uh, data that you want to bring in. So at your backend, you could have you know, multiple uh, sources. But with GraphQL, you define, it says you want to uh, bring uh, uh, first name, last name from a particular backend, but then you could bring in credit card from a different backend. All this you can define now at the GraphQL editor. Okay, so let me now uh, switch over to my browser uh, using Firefox to uh, demonstrate these uh, three use cases. Okay, so uh, what I have here is the API Connect um, API Manager, right? You can actually come uh, 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 a little on towards the end. I will tell you where you can, you can uh, provision your own images and do some uh, hands-on labs yourself. Okay, but inside here uh, in the API Manager is where the uh, lifecycle and governance and even you can develop APIs inside here for your API developers. So over here, uh, we have the various uh, tiles to connect to the different uh, aspects of the product. Uh, the first thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bring in a REST API. OK, so I have some APIs that are very defined. You can see over here, it, it shows out uh, the different types of API that is, it, it, this particular is about, when was it last modified. Uh, and, and you can see I even have uh, uh, GraphQLs uh, being uh, uh, imported in or created as well inside here. OK, similarly, we have another uh, measure about products. So in products, what we do is we uh, group the APIs into uh, a grouping, and then we publish the whole grouping to the portal or to the gateway uh, for the uh, consuming site, application site, to come and consume. We'll, we'll see a bit more later on in the demonstration. Okay. So over here, what I first need to do is I can uh, add an API. So you can see could we REST, could we Graph, or SOAP. And over here, we have the different uh, ways they can uh, bring in. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in an existing one. I will uh, upload the uh, YAML file of the REST API. Uh, it will do some validation to make sure the YAML file is correct uh, and go through uh, uh, activating it. So at this point in time, I do not want to activate first because I want to do some changes to it. Put next, it will generate the definition. And I now can straight away do an edit. So you can see it's, it's very simple, very, very clearly uh, 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 run through. Okay, Over here, you can see uh, I can put in a lot more stuff, like I could put the, a summary, a description. Uh, it gives me the different type of protocols uh, that I want to connect this to. In this case, we are doing HTTPS, um, the base path, uh, what sort of 
format we're looking at to consume and produce uh, the life cycle okay we, we need to enforce the uh, api we're using connect to a gateway uh yeah, yeah enables uh cost so that you can go cross uh domain right and and of course further down we have uh two different types of gateway type in this case we're using the data power api gateway similarly uh over here you can also look at the different definitions that you can add to it in, in this particular uh fine branch i already have a client id uh which is a api key type to make sure that uh, anyone who's calling this API needs to at least provide with me the application uh, client ID, right? And I enforce it here. And uh, the various paths that it could be set up, in this case, there's a details path that allows me to put in parameters and such if need be, right? So, um, and then of course, we, we can, uh, there is the um, target services of where it's gonna be uh, and such. A, a, a very useful feature here is that for developers who are more keen to use um you know uh, command driven or, or, or typing how we instead of a GUI interface we have a source uh, editor here for you so it actually translate whatever that you uh, have put in into the configuration on design tab into the source and however changes that you put into the source here it also be affect or will reflect back into the design so this is a, a good way for uh, different kind of developers who wants to come in to use the product and then lastly, of course, uh, we have the assembly part where we can assemble a flow of the API. Uh, we have different categories here, the, the logic base, uh, the, the transaction policies, uh, uh, and of course, uh, even security policies as well if you need to uh, generate JWT or validity JWT. So these are where we see the typical built-in policies APIs would need. That's why you, you can have a list of uh, all put into the product, uh, into the API manager. If you need more custom policies, uh, there is a way, of course, you can grab it out from the API gateway and bring it into the uh, manager here and become a custom policy for you to uh, invoke as well. So when, once this is done, what I would do is I would then uh, enable this, make it online, okay? So I, I turn it from offline to online. What it does is it will activate my API and then I can now uh, um, have the API uh, ready for testing, okay? Uh, our typical way we, we do it is that we can do this way and then uh, we set up because it's very activated it published into a product I can take out my operations in this case which is the get operation I uh, get details and then I can straight away invoke right so as you can once it's invoked I will see my status or all my results you see it's able to bring back the de details of what is at the back end through this single API call Okay. And this is, of course, with the client ID already set in place. I could, of course, add a little bit more if I want, uh, which is to put in a secret because typically every um, uh, API, uh, you may have a client ID and a secret. But here, what we, I'm going to do is, besides client ID, I'm going to uh, put in a uh, OAuth credentials as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is first I go back out um, over here and I'm going to create a new version first. Okay, so I save as a new version, we'll call it a.b.c, submit it. So now you see there's a second one available. I will go inside here and uh, add in my credentials. Okay, but of course, before you, you add in your credentials, you have to define your uh, OAuth um, registry and uh, provider. This is where you go into the uh, resources. And over here, you would define a uh, authentication URL, where's the user registry. And similarly, you provide an OAuth provider. In this case, I've already provided one as well. Okay, inside here, uh, I've defined where's the scope that I want it to, to reference from, the details, and, and the rest of the other information as well, are all being defined clearly inside here. And once that is done, you will go into the uh, sandbox, Okay, and in the settings, you make sure you enable uh, uh, this registry as well as the OAuth. You go inside here and you edit and you make sure you check the box of whichever uh, registry that you are going to use. Similarly, for the OAuth provider, you will also go in there and ensure that you check the checkbox of the provider that you created. Okay, so once these two things is done, uh, the last thing you need to do is to uh, look at the uh, application. Uh, in API Connect, we have a test application that you can uh, use it to test OAuth. So what you do is you open up the test application and you make sure you put in the uh, OAuth redirect URL. Okay, in this case, I've already put it inside here. Okay, 
So once this is done, uh, you go back to your uh, API, and then you start to put in the uh, OAuth credentials into the API for security, right? Here, say OAuth. Then I choose the OAuth type. I bring in my native here, and the flow is an access code, and it will bring out all the authorization URL, token URL, and of course the scope of where it wants it. Once it's done, I just have to save. Okay, so once I created the OAuth security definition, I will then make sure that my API will and uh, have this inside in place. So I check this and I check the uh, scope as well, and I save this. Right. So with this save, now uh, everything is in place. I go back to the assembly part, and I will uh, able to do this test now. Okay. So let me see. Um, I can uh, do the test uh, over here. Again, coming here, then activate my API. Okay. Right, so the API is now activated. Uh, I choose my operations. And you can see that uh, it, it provides in uh, the additional point of where you need to uh, redirect where is the OAuth uh, access code going to be. So over here, I need to put in the um, uh, uh, redirect URL, which is just now uh, the one that we have set up. So let me type it out. In the sandbox uh, test application, and I make sure I check the scope for that I want, and then here I click authorize. So it will prompt me to key in my uh, uh, credentials, which I already key in uh, earlier, and therefore I can take the code here and paste it back here, and now I can get my token. Right, so with both of these now in place, I can do an invoke. And with this, I will be able to get my data back out here. So it, it showed that now my API is OAuth secure, uh, in addition to the client ID that is in place there. Right. So you can see uh, it is a very easy way to do your development, API development, or testing within the API manager. But this is really on just a you know, uh, at the testing of APIs, right? How then do you make sure you um, productize this and then publish it to the gateway? So when this is done, uh, what you can do is you go back here and then I can create a new product I mentioned, right? So I create a product, uh, I say it's a new product and I call it um, Fine Branch. Provide other information if I need to. As I just go next and I select my uh, two uh, fine branch. One is, of course, which is without the OAuth, and one is with the OAuth. Right. So once it's done, I click next. Uh, by default, we uh, provide a default plan for you, which gives you a hundred weekly limit calls uh, per hour. You could change this, or you could add a new one to have maybe premium plan or gold plan that is more stringent and you only give to certain you know, developers or certain applications to use. In here, I'm not going to change that. So I'm going to leave this is next. And then now you decide how you want to uh, make this product available. Meaning that at a point when uh, organizations go into the web portal to see this, to use it at publicly, or only after they log in, then authenticated, then they get to see this product. And similarly, when you want to subscribe, do they subscribe uh, only after authenticated or uh, maybe a custom is to uh, only tie to a particular uh, end user, for example, or a different developer, per se. I'm going to, again, going to leave it default. I'm not going to publish it yet. I'm just going to save the product. Okay, so when I'm done, I can do edit. And again here, I can add in more things like maybe some uh, contact details, uh, terms of service, licensing, all this is up to you to go and uh, add additionally to the, the, the product that you have. So once it's done, or you can take a look at the APIs that we ma I mentioned, the two APIs that is being uh, uh, put into the product. Similarly, the plan now, there's only a current default plan over here. You know, there's one I could add more, uh, and then I save. 
and then I uh, go out. Okay, back into the uh, de uh, develop uh, page itself. So now I have a fine branch product available. So what I can do, I can what I can do is I can stage it first. So when you do stage, what it means is that you are not straight really publishing to a gateway. You are just getting it ready to be published, right? I will stage this, and and it goes to my sandbox catalog. Uh, so it it becomes like ready for uh, deployment. You you look at it. Okay. So I will go into my manage tab, go into the sandbox catalog, and you can see I have a fine branch product now being staged. Okay. It hasn't been published yet. Okay. The rest are uh, other products that I already had. So over here, what I can do now is I can publish. Okay. I will publish this. And it will go in again. I can change the visibility if I need to. Otherwise, I'll surely publish it and it goes into my uh, uh, developer portal and my gateway as well. So, if I switch over to my developer portal uh, and do a refresh, going into view all. I will see my fine branch now with my two uh, APIs inside. Right. Oh, so over in the developer portal is where your application developers, you know, could be internal, could be external. They come in to do um, view your your published APIs, to look at uh, documentations of the APIs, you know, and create applications. So you, you do need. So what I need to do now is I will sign in first with a credential that I recreated. And I would see an additional tab here called apps, where is the application that I will use for testing. Right. So in this application tab, I already created an app called My App. If you look inside the My App, uh, what it gives you is um, analytics. Okay. If you have tested some applications before, you uh, some APIs before, you will see the analytics of the uh, API stats over here. But importantly, also it shows you what are the API products that you have subscribed to, right? The list of products you have subscribed to, and it gives you your own credentials for the application. You know the client ID and there's a client secret. So all these are unique to the application itself, right? So now over here, what I want to do is to go and uh, into the fine branch product and uh, subscribe to this default plan of uh, 100 calls per hour. Okay, it will prompt me for uh, which application that I'm going to subscribe to. Use it to subscribe. I say my app, and then it will tell me to confirm that is this product that I'm going to subscribe to. And I say next, and then it's done. Okay, it's not subscribed, so I click done. So it will bring me back to the find branch app product here, and over here I can actually see both APIs for me to do uh, further testing. So I look at the first one, which doesn't have the O off, right? Uh, I can see the the details of how the endpoints are, what sort of security is required. I can even download the open API document if I wish to. Okay, uh, I look at the operation. In this case, again, it shows me uh, the different parameters and uh, example of how it is. What I could do is I could try it out. So the default is that it will use my client ID for my, my app. And uh, the parameters is ready to accept. So I will send. And over here, you can see the data is come, it came back okay, exactly as how the API developer from the enterprise will present it. All right, this is great. So now, if I were to go back to uh, the branch product, and look at the other one, which is the ABC one that has the OAuth part as well. Okay, so uh, in the get details again under try over here now you will see that it actually requires uh, slightly more because uh, there's a client secret and you of course need a token as well. So uh, I, I will need to fill in my client secret uh, uh, that comes from my app, and after that to uh, launch the application to put in back the token uh, and then call it out as well. Okay, so similarly, all this will be uh, inside uh, for you to test. Similar, no difference from the application developer, right? So, so it, it is very clear over here with the developer portal, the app the application developers get their own portal to come in to have their way to subscribe to application, uh, to, to API products, to uh, have a view of the statistics that the APIs are being called. You know, and and have their own way to manage this as well. There's also, of course, the different uh, social aspect where we allow them to come in to do uh, posting of blogs if they want to to ask questions. If if they have questions that they need to ask about certain way of doing 
uh, the APIs or the products as well. All this is actually in the developer portal. Okay. So let me quickly go back to my API uh, Connect uh, API Manager here, and now uh, do the last use case, which is the GraphQL. Okay. So um, I come back into here, and now I will add a GraphQL uh, API. Right. So over here, you can see we have an existing uh, GraphQL uh, service that I can go and retrieve from. I can give an uh, 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 title. Yes. GraphQL. Okay, I need the um, URL for the GraphQL. Okay. And then go next. So it gives me some warning to say that you know there are some limits that I need to set it, but we can ignore this at this point in time. We just make sure that we uh, checkbox all these necessary editors and uh, costing that we talk about later on. Okay, uh, go to next, and over here we do not want to activate first. We make sure we secure it with the client ID and the cost, and let the artifact uh, generation created. So now we can edit. Okay, so you notice that now there's an additional GraphQL schema there in over there that allows you to configure the GraphQL schema a little bit more, right? So uh, the, the rest are all the same. There's, there's no diff to, to all of this. So let us go to the GraphQL schema. So we mentioned, you know, uh, the, the schema uh, uh, is to point to, you know, apply maybe some additional configuration. But in this case, we see some warnings. So if you look at the warnings, uh, basically it's telling you that, you know, there are certain, uh, uh, in this case, limits that is not uh, put in place. Uh, that the GraphQL is, is looking for. So you, you, it provides uh, recommendations for you to apply those uh, uh, recommendations to it. So what you can do is you just click Apply All, and uh, it, it will tell you what it's going to do, makes it okay to, to make sure there's a limit set into it, set into it, and click Apply. Right. So once it's applied, you just save the, uh, the schema or the API. And once it's saved, now we can go and take a look at the uh, assembly part. What it does is that it will initiate the whole API flow. You can see now, basically, it's a flow that does uh, different uh, uh, operations over here. Uh, but we will leave it as it is, as it does that. And then now let's uh, activate the API. Right. So now that it's activated, you will see endpoints is up and running, and there's a test uh, tab as well. So just now we were able to test via this, uh, which is one of the features. But similarly, we have the test option to do testing of the uh, API as well. So over here, you will see that now uh, we give a GraphQI, uh, GraphQL editor in place here, uh, and of course, the different operations that you wish so, uh, to, to test on. In this case, we're going to do, do the get. Okay, uh, Everything is in clear. So when you do a test at this point in time, nothing is being returned because uh, there is no parameters or there's no uh, query that you have put in place. See, uh, that there's nothing inside here. So what I can do is now put in a certain query. And then um, run it. OK. Right, so you can see the data is being retrieved back. Uh, I say limit to two, therefore there are two of these come back. And I'm looking for the, the few names of first and last, so it's first and last. If I want to change this, I could change this to uh, five, and I run again. And you will see now there are five different entries. So you can see now, uh, if you use GraphQL, um, you have a little bit more control over uh, how many records or how many much data you want to retrieve back here. But similarly, there are also access controls that you can uh, ensure that uh, you, you can't retrieve everything that you want. So for example, if now I were to put in uh, additional uh, uh, requirements where I want the um, credit card information okay, over here. So I will remove this and put in here. Where now, besides the name, I'm looking for a shipping address, which is another backend different source. 
and also a credit card information that I want, right? So when I trigger this to run, it will show you that uh, you cannot access. You have no rights to go in to query credit card, right? So it gives you an error. So what I can do is I can remove my credit card details, uh, query, and I run again. And this time you can see it comes back besides us the name, the social shipping address, right? And it, because I, I, this time it's two, it's two. But if I could change to five, again, uh, this can become uh, more. So you have better control, but you feel uh, con uh, limited by the backend access of what you can actually retrieve from. Okay, so it's very good. So again, it's, it's a different use case. You look at it, GraphQL or REST or so. The different uh, uh, APIs that can be uh, needed for different use cases. Uh, all in a single uh, solution here offered by IBM API Connect, right? So this, and of course, you can then publish this into the uh, developer portal, and the application developers can actually test this as well, right? Okay, so that, that's that's more or less uh, the the demonstration I'm going to um, uh, share here. Uh, I, I want to go back to my slides to talk a little bit more about the uh, offering itself. Okay, so I, I've uh, demonstrated the three different use cases of uh, using REST APIs. Um, oh, SOAP, I'm so sorry, I, I missed out that part. So let me quickly run back to the SOAP part. Uh, for, for SOAP, again, it's um, very simple. We just have to take, uh, import in a whistle, uh, in this case from uh, existing whistle service. Right, we bring in the whistle file, which I have. Click next, uh, click next again. You can see a lot of times, SOAP whistle, I um, mean, SOAP APIs are primarily used more for operations, right? So it's, it's not really uh, like you just consume data per se, you do certain operations, right? So over here, uh, we can click this and then we can straight away activate the API because it's, it's fairly uh, just an operation that we're going to call at the back end. So the API is um, online. Okay, you can now do an edit to go and test the API. Um, coming back to here again, uh, you see the flow is to invoke a backend service. Uh, we call the operation in the case to get balance. So the get balance requires some parameters. We can generate the whistle, uh, the soap service, sorry, and then uh, it requires a parameter. In this case, this parameter is three and we go and invoke, right? And then the results come back with a value 154.79, okay? So again, a backend that is still on SOAP, but then you're exposing this as a REST to the front, right? So uh, as modernization applications typically will use REST APIs, so they call this and then it will go to the back to invoke this service and returns back a result to the front, okay? So all the three different uh, use cases can be uh, 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 developed or, or configured in the API Connect solution. Okay. Right. Um, but besides um, API as the means of integration, if you 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 probably also aware there are different integration other other integration patterns. For example, messaging. For example, uh, file transfer, for example, Kafka, right? So um, IBM understands that you, you need a platform to do the whole different integration patterns together rather than having silos on its own, right? So IBM Cloud Pack for integration is such a platform that uh, IBM offers uh, with, uh, and it's all on containers, okay? Using uh, Red Hat OpenShift as the container uh, construction platform uh, is able to, uh, uh, have this whole integration products all sitting in one platform for organizations to uh, develop uh, uh, and have a, a single consistency platform to do all the integration patterns. Over here, you can see uh, we have uh, API lifecycle, which is the use of API Connect. 
uh, our application and data integration where you have, let's say, a lot of disparate applications or uh, source and backend. You can use the App Connect uh, to do that um, uh, broker uh, feature for you. Uh, of course, we have our IBM MQ that is very uh, reliable for uh, assured delivery of messaging. Uh, and of course, we introduce uh, even Kafka as well. We see a lot of modernized applications uh, using event-driven way of um, uh, looking for uh, information. And therefore, Kafka is one way to do it. And lastly, of course, uh, we have our Aspera, which is uh, a reliable, secure, uh, high-speed file transfer uh, for organizations that needs more real-time and secure way of transferring files. OK, um, this platform allows organizations to have um, the, the containers uh, that they want to the modern uh, digital transformation that they're looking at to run everything on the cloud. Because by, by sitting on top of Red Hat OpenShift, uh, and it, it can run on any of the different cloud providers that you see over here. Could be IBM Public Cloud, uh, AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, even private cloud, uh, if you, did, you want to Built on prem, uh, this is also available, and you don't, you are then not limited by a particular uh, cloud provider that you you can't uh, 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 go from one to the other, right? So for for this cloud platform integration, uh, we do offer a forty five days free for you to try it out. Uh, you, you can grab the the deck that I have here, where uh, you can go into or you can go into Red Hat Open uh, Red Hat Marketplace, uh, where they you can spin up a image. And it can allow you to try out this whole uh, uh, platform, you know, and see how the the and see that how to use the different integration capabilities as well. As for the labs, just now which I've demonstrated, again there are links here. Uh, either you go into the API Connect uh, 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 knowledge center that we have those various tutorials for you to do, and of course we also have uh, the lab uh, uh, link here uh, from a different site uh, that you can try as well. And of course, lastly, uh, we have our major event thing that's coming out in uh, next month on the May 11 and 12. Uh, I do hope to see all of you there uh, uh, to listen in to the latest updates from IBM on the roadmaps and on the uh, announcements of the product features as well. OK, so I've come to the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, please feel free to ask in this. Uh, Q&A. Or if you have anything to ask me, you can also type it out um, in, 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 in the chat as well. We can maybe look at the um, uh, demo screen again and uh, we run through a few more uh, of what is inside there. Oops, sorry, not this. Okay. Let's save this. Back inside here. Um, you can go back to the, the portal, yep, over here, and then we can look at the um, products. All the products that you can see, you can sort it, you can categorize them, you can you know, give five star to it as well. Um, one thing, uh, maybe we, we also can look at is, of course, additional security. We also support JWT, right? So you can actually generate JWT tokens or validate JWT tokens. Uh, with the policy inside over here, uh, I mentioned um, you you can you can actually take the um, endpoints. I can look at the assembly here where I have already created a um, uh, JWT policy that I take from here to come and generate the token. Right. So with this, uh, I can then at the real portal uh, go into the uh, product, find the uh, API. This one, which I've already subscribed to from a product. And I can try it out. All right. So over here, I will type 
and do send. Right, so I can get a token return back. And of course, I can then uh, take this if I want to, and then go and um, validate this token, which I can do in my uh, validate uh, product that I have here. But first, I think I need to subscribe to this because I'm not, my application don't, it's not subscribing to my app. Back, next, and done. Okay, so I come back to here, validate, and I put in my, okay, so, okay, and I get back my uh, details. Right, so you can, you can uh, make all use of the policies that we have here to generate or to validate uh, JWT. If you need additional policies, uh, you can grab it all from the API gateway as well. Okay. Okay, uh, I still have about seven, eight, nine minutes or so. Um, anyone has any other questions? I, I do want to encourage you to um, look into the core for integration because uh, a lot of times customers uh, don't have just one single integration offering right you you not necessarily only do apis because you you may have apis with um, uh, uh, mq or api sometimes and you need to convert it to into different formats because enterprise use different systems right so the platform itself allows you to have that um, uh, ability to stitch up the different integration patterns together, you know, and you can do cross tracing, right? In Cloudflare for integration, uh, we allow you to trace through an API to an MQ uh, to, to see maybe the flow, the latency that you want to see. Otherwise, it would typically be on its own console or individual logs that you're trying to see itself. Okay, uh, if there is no more questions, um, thank you very much. Uh, oh, trial license. Yeah, like I said, uh, if you want to try out the uh, Cloudflare for integration, which has API Connect, uh, you can go to open uh, Red Hat Marketplace, right? Red Hat Marketplace, uh, and it has a forty-five days trial for you to go and try it out. You know, uh, that that's fine. Yeah, the other thing is, of course, if you want to try out API Connect on yourself, uh, we do have a um, uh uh website ibm website that allows you to try it out it's called uh ibm demos you can google for this and then uh inside there we uh have, have different uh, artifacts for you to like watch a video if you want to know more about our product feature if you want to try it out uh on you know your, by yourself there are certain labs that you can try it out for the different products all kind of products it not necessarily is uh, integrated products you want to look at um analytics products, uh, database products, uh, security products, uh, those are available for you to try. It's all snippets, you know, maybe 15 minutes kind of trial, uh, 30 minutes maybe max, so that you, you get a feel of the capability of the product that it has. Okay. Uh, 